Visit our website at la32nc.org for further information on how to get involved with the LA32 Neighborhood Council. Once again, thank you for attending tonight's workshop. Again, that's also I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to make sure that we uh, turn this over to USC so that they can uh, start the interaction that we need. Um, without further ado, um, former Senator Martha Escudia, Vice President of USC Government Relations. Well, sorry, uh, Eddie's here from the Wall Heights Neighborhood Council. Thanks for coming in. Uh, we very much appreciate you being here. Please say a few words. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here tonight. Um, and I'm sorry, I can't find the statement that the Executive Committee approved for tonight, but it's, in essence, uh, we want to thank you for being here, uh, for being participants in this, in this uh, consideration of the park uh, changes. The Wall Heights Neighborhood Council has also not taken a position on this item. Uh, it has come before us as a presentation, not as a question. Uh, but the community has requested that we bring it back to our next general board meeting on August 28th. And we encourage you to get involved with your neighborhood council, whether you are local to LA32 or the Wall Heights Neighborhood Council. You can visit our website at bhnc.net to get more information or be updated about when we are having meetings. Thank you so much. We did cancel our Planning and Land Use Committee meeting to encourage our community to come out here and also participate in this meeting tonight. We do want to hear as much of your uh, voice tonight, so uh, I may come up to you afterwards to get your name or just ask what you meant by something so that we can bring that back to the general board when it is considered later on. Thank you so much for your participation. Y de nuevo, para las personas que necesiten traducción, uh, por favor levanten la mano para que les, des audífonos, les den audífonos para que se les pueda traducir todo lo que se diga esta noche. Gracias. Thank you so much, Paul, and thank you so much to our neighborhood councils who are present here. And thank you to all of you for being back here again. I see some faces, you know, that I met last Saturday, and I really appreciate the fact that you're coming here again on Thursday to have this discussion. USC, again, as I indicated last Saturday, we do believe in transparency. And we are here to, pro to talk to the community, to find out what are concerns, and we heard a lot of concerns last Saturday, but we also want to find out what do you want. And the plan is just that, a plan. The plan is not set in stone, it's not set in concrete. Many times plans are subject to change. But the best type of plans are those that have the input of the community, and that's why we are here. So let me summarize what happened last Saturday. A lot of you last Saturday perhaps coffee there in the corner, taking down furious notes, and I literally identified name by name as to what were the issues of concern, and also some of the ideas of some of the individuals who spoke, and some of them were very, very good ideas. So let me just, if you, um, I beg of your indulgence, if I may just summarize what you all said last Saturday. Obviously, there's a lot of community concerns. The main one being, that a lot of you uh, basically indicated that you have, you're in opposition to the street extension because you view that street extension as a taking of a very scarce parkland. So we heard that. Another thing that you said is that you obviously have a concern over the impact of the project on natural habitat. The habitat is right there by the railroad, um, the land that's owned by the railroad. You also had concerns over increased traffic and problems with parking. I know that I spoke a lot with Ms. Ruth Rios about parking and the issue about how people come over to the neighborhoods and take away the parking that belongs to you, the residents, and that perhaps these type of projects would perhaps, you know, uh, make that even more difficult for residents themselves, especially the ones across the street, to not have parking. I heard that loud and clear. And Ruth would know that I even followed up with her, I think, on Tuesday, and I spent a good 45 minutes talking to her. You also have an issue, a concern over the removal of the handball courts. And you also have a concern over what is perceived as gentrification. So there was a lot of uh, frustration 
And uh, I understand that this community has decades of, of feeling that perhaps the larger region and other stakeholders have never really, um, how can I say it, have never really cared about the community. And, and I feel that. You know, uh, I, I grew up right in front of the Pomona Freeway. Literally, there were no houses in front of me. Just like the kids in Ramona Gardens have the 10th Freeway as a backyard, I have the Pomona Freeway as a front yard. So I understand those type of concerns about people and families feeling for the decades that you're not being heard. And I also understand that many times as you're, as you're talking and trying to be heard, but obviously these, these feelings of frustration come to the surface. And I have no problem with understanding frustration. I have no problem with anger, as long as we can manage the anger and the frustration in a positive manner to hopefully get a positive outcome. That's why USC is here. Believe it or not, some good ideas came out on Saturday. And let me tell you what some of those good ideas were. Some of the good ideas, my friend Art Legal, Local jobs. If in fact USC is coming here and building and is going to increase economic activity, obviously that creates jobs. And so there's a question here about jobs, job creation, and how many of those jobs will go for local people. I heard that. I also heard loud and clear from Scott Johnson that we had to recognize the historical significance of Hazard Park. And I was too little, Scott. I didn't do the walkouts. Believe it or not, I'm not as old as people think I am. I was not part of the walkouts. Uh, I remember, you know, still living on 4th and Rowan, and when the Chicago Moratorium took place in heaven knows 1968, I was only a little girl of 10 years of age, you know, mowing the lawn with my grandfather. But I did see all the smoke, you know, coming out from basically what ended up, you know, being some kind of a riot. So I was not here to understand the significance of the walkouts that were led by Mr. Sal Castro. However, I respect the fact that this park is one of historical significance and that is something that needs to be honored and recognized. You also said, um, some gentlemen said about USC providing subsidies for local youth sports. And I heard that there's a long history here of, of activities in the sport of baseball. And I was showing my son all of the, um, the championship banners. I said, well, wow, we've got some great baseball teams here. Uh, and I speak from that. My son is the front row, you know, because he used to be a baseball player too. And I know how important it is to have you know, good baseball diamonds. But the project, uh, to the gentleman who brought up the issue of the baseball diamonds, the project does not impact the baseball diamonds at all. But, you know, at all. We don't even, we do not even touch them. So please come to our stations afterwards and you will get that clear information. Um, a jogging path. There was a lady that indicated that she felt that perhaps a jogging path as well as outdoor exercise equipment would be a good idea. To have an order to promote obviously a good healthy lifestyle in a park in which frankly we need a lot of you know good community benefits to come to that park. So and then we got some written comments. And some of the red comments were obviously from people that didn't want to speak out loud. And some of the comments included, well, can we do a, a street, but not this one? Not, not the one, you know, right off, right, literally right outside here, but do another one basically in, in, in USC land, and, and do an extension that obviously does not impact the current handball courts. You know, um, I thought that was a very interesting option. You know, and, and obviously, you know, I'm not a uh, person that turns a blind eye to good ideas or a deaf ear. And so I thought, okay, that's that's something that's interesting. You know, basically leave everything as is, including the handball courts, and do another option in terms of extending the street but do another, you know, area of land. So that's basically the summary. And again, I'm here to tell you that this community outreach does not stop here. I know that Mark came up to me and said, what happens after this, Martha? And I said, well, you know, I just continue. I mean, whether it's a large forum or a smaller forum, whether people want me to go to their homes, whether people want me to go to their churches or to talk to parent groups, I will be there. But at the same time, it's a two-way street. You have to let me know where you want me to go, I will be there. We'll still do our community outreach, 
as long as it takes for me to really, really find out what this community wants. And that's why we're going to have the stations, which we did not have an opportunity last time, to have a station have dialogues in different kinds of stations. And we really, really encourage you to do that because, see that station number one? Is it different number one, Norfolk Street? I want to hear your ideas. And literally, that ESO and every ESO has paper that says your ideas. I want you to write them down. I want you to write down those ideas because I need to get, get that information and put it all together and summarize it and basically give it to my higher ups. But I need to get you know, options from you. I cannot tell you what the options are. Only you can determine what the options are that's best for your community. All I respectfully ask of you is to go to the stations and tell me your ideas. Our next speaker is Lori Stone, who will talk more about the project, but specifically focusing our attention to our stations which we have throughout the gym. And thank you so much for hearing me once again. I truly appreciate it. Thank you, Barbara. As Martha said, my name is Lori Stone, and I work for USC in our real estate department. I want to thank you all for being here tonight. I know a number of you were here on a Saturday, and you take it your concerns about the project. I also want to thank the council districts, the neighborhood councils, and Rec and Park for allowing us to have this dialogue with you and facilitate it. In terms of how the rest of the workshop is going to work, I'm going to do a very quick, brief presentation to try and give all of you a quick overview of how the project is proposed currently as it relates to Norfolk Street. I also want to then give you an outline of the various stations that we have and really the meat of this uh, meeting is to have you go to the different workstations, give us your input, and then we'll reconvene and have public comment that can be informed with the dialogue that you've had with us. So in terms of the proposed Norfolk, Norfolk Street connection, what we're talking about is an extension of the street, Norfolk, which currently runs on the north end of Hazard Park. It dead ends right now at Playground Street this north-south alignment here. And the proposed alignment, which is on the city's general plan, is to continue that street to Soho Street. So it runs along this edge of the property here. This is a map of the city's uh, zoning for the site. And as you can see on the map, it currently shows Norfolk Street running all the way through to Soho. That is in a place right now, obviously. The proposed alignment will be built out if this project went forward as discussed. One thing that I want to make really clear is in some of the dialogue that we had with you, with both in the public comment session last time and in the questions afterward was, there was a thought that the, the road was running through the middle of the park, and that's not the case. It's at the very northern edge. It runs uh, immediately north of the park, but it is on land that is certainly used right now to proceed this park land. It does not cut through the middle. What you see here is an alignment of railroad property that was called railroad alignment. One other comment that we wanted to make clear is people have talked about how this uh, alignment currently is a way that a lot of water runs from the north to the south and it feeds some of the habitat in Hazard Park. We wanted to make sure that it was clear the way the road is designed, there's a culvert that would go underneath the road so there would be no direction, no redirection of any water traveling from the north to the south, there would be no change in the amount of runoff. That water would continue to run through and get to the same habitat that it does today. Um, we do have a set of what are proposed park benefits that have been put together based on our dialogue, um, the council office's dialogue with community members. These are proposed. These are not set in stone. It's basically an option that is before you today and you really want to get your feedback. Um, the first is, as you know, the handball courts where they're currently located, they would need to be rebuilt and they would be built to the uh, south. So the current handball courts are in this location here. They would be built just to the south of that. The handball courts would be built before there was any construction done so that the old handball courts would not be taken down before the new handball courts were in place. There would be no lapse in time for people who utilize the courts to be able to access them. There would be new picnic tables and seating that was associated with that located, relocated handball courts. Um, one thing that had been suggested by the council office was a new play structure for the park. There's a very nice, relatively new play structure that's for older children 
that's currently in this location. And the proposal was to put a new play structure for younger children. We heard on Saturday that maybe some of you don't think that's a good use of park land. And so we want to know, do you want, would you be interested in a play structure there or not? Um, there would be upgrades to the restrooms here in the gym. There would be new ADA compliant paths that get you from the handball courts to the, to the gym. There would be additional street lighting that was on this portion of the street, the new street. There would also be a new signalized crosswalk at Norfolk and Soto with a, a traffic signal and a crosswalk. So if you were coming to the park and you're not in the immediate community and you want to drive, this would provide you much more direct access to the park. If you have a stroller and you're walking to the park and you want to get to the play structures, this would give you a much uh, safer way to get there in terms of the access points. Again, these are options in terms of the play structure, the handball boards. We need to know what the community feels about those and what are some of the other items that you would propose in addition to the running path and other things that we heard on Saturday. So in terms of the workshop station, um, there'll be a couple of us that are at Workstation 1, which is the first station here, to talk about Hazard Park and the street. If you have concerns about the runoff, the water, how does that work, we'll be there to answer those questions and to really get your suggestions. Every station, as Martha said, has a paper pad. We want to know what are some of the concerns, but really importantly, what could we do to help compensate for this? The second station is station number two. We have um, information on the traffic and parking at that station. I know concerns were raised about how does the traffic, if this intersection goes through to Soto, how does that affect Soto, how does that affect traffic in the neighborhood? Our traffic engineers have indicated that it would actually alleviate some of the congestion on Soto Street, in particular at the Soto Alcazar intersection. But again, we have people there, our traffic engineers there to answer those questions and to also talk about some of the parking issues. Um, one thing that we did want to make clear is on the parking and on the development projects, we would have parking adjacent to the student housing and the hotel development. So this map shows where those development projects are proposed. This is the park down here to the south. A block north is where the buildings that we're talking about building in the next three to five years are planned. There's a medical office building that would be in this location. That's a clinical building for our cancer patients. That's proposed to go here. There's a hotel that would go on this corner, and then student housing project that would go adjacent to it. The university owns all of this land. We're not acquiring any land for these projects. And again, the projects would have parking immediately adjacent to the north in a structure. Station number four is about uh, some of the projects that USC currently does for the community. I know there was a speaker here on Saturday who was very dismayed about um, the lack of university involvement in the community. I hope that you'll take some time and go to the station and see. We do have a number of programs that the community can benefit from that are currently ongoing. We do health fairs, we do work with the schools, there are science fairs. Please take a chance to learn about the numerous programs and more importantly, what are the areas that you're interested in seeing USC help you? If, there are, if you have youth programs, if it's a church, if it's schools, if anything that we can do, we have a tremendous amount of resources that we can direct to your community programs. We'd like to hear about that. Um, with that, I'd like to invite you to the various workstations, and I think the goal is to have a dialogue with you, an interactive dialogue for the next 30 to 45 minutes, and then after that, we'll reconvene and have public comment for you. So I'd like to thank you, and then if you could please, um, we'll be staffing the stations. We look forward to hearing.